This wedding was an assignment for my Religion two class in Catholic school. This one's wife, in Griftus, who's the winner? Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. The Olympics takes place every four years. We have the Summer Olympics and the Winter Olympics. I dare say that those of you listening to me will be able to recall particular Olympic winners. Some of you might recall them because you participate in a particular sport and therefore that person succeeding in that sport stood out for you. In other instances, it's probably linked to your country. So, for instance, if you're from the United States, you're likely to remember the medal-winning activities of Carl Lewis, who won nine golds and one silver medal, or Michael Phelps with his record-breaking 23 gold medals from swimming. Then again, if you're British, you may well think about Chris Hoy with all of the medals that he has won for cycling, or Jason Kenney who won seven gold medals. If you're from the Soviet Union, as was, you would be thinking of Boris Shelkin from gymnastics who won seven golds. If you're Norwegian, the names of Marit Bjorgen or Ole Einar Bjordalen or Bjorn Dali will spring to mind as winning multiple gold medals at cross-country skiing and biathlon, or biathlon, as the Norwegians would say. The Japanese, you might think of Sawe Kato. If you're Hungarian, Aladar Gerevic, the fencing expert, might spring to mind if you're a particular old age and recall all the way back with those victories. There'll be others perhaps that you recall not so much as them winning lots of medals, but perhaps putting in a particularly memorable performance. That you might remember, for instance, the competitiveness that took place between Sebastian Coe and Steve Ovette of Britain in the middle distance, Olympic, middle distance running events in the Olympics. Many of you will remember particular medal winners and competitors in the Olympics over the many years that it is run as a consequence of loyalty to your country, particularly notable performances, spirited comebacks, people winning against the odds, the fact that they've won a lot of medals, that they competed in some of the more prominent events, for instance, the 100 metres. And therefore, this is what sticks in your mind. If I was to ask you now just to write down five notable Olympians, I'm pretty certain you would be able to provide that list, leaving out, of course, what I've already mentioned. That if I was to do this at the beginning and say, right, before we go anywhere, write down five Olympians that you can name. Five people who've competed in the Olympics. doesn't necessarily even need to be people who've won medals, but I bet you could name them. Now I'm going to ask you to name five people who have competed in the Invictus Games. Take your time. Think it through. Who is there that you can name that's either competed or has competed and won medals? Do you recall where they're from? Can you name five? I couldn't even name one. And of course I've read coverage of it. Some of you might be able to name maybe one or two, I suspect, but I think you'd be hard-pressed to either name some and certainly five. Now, of course, the Olympics is far bigger than the Invictus Games. It's been established for a much longer time, and it is the global sporting event alongside the World Cup. And yet, the Invictus Games gets lots of coverage, probably far outweighing its actual impact and the number of people that compete in it. This, of course, is as a consequence of the involvement of Prince Harry, which serves the purpose of gaining prominence and publicity for the Invictus Games. That it's spoken about on the news, that it's regularly referenced in 
the newspapers, that people talk about it on social media. But the problem is this. The conversations that take place, the coverage that occurs, isn't about the people who actively participate. It isn't about the people who need the help of the Invictus Games. It's invariably about two people. The coverage is about Prince Harry and this one's wife. About this one's wife marching in front of service people in an act of stolen valour. About this one's wife and what she's wearing. About this one's wife and her attempts to commandeer the camera lens. This one's wife and where she's dining and who she's dining with. Just let's take, for example, the three days that were took, that were in Whistler just recently. This was an event which was meant to foreshadow the 2025 games. And what did we get? Sure, they met some competitors, but can you name any of them? Sure, they were seen out and about with some of the competitors on the slopes, and we saw Harry turning his hand to a couple of events. But most of the coverage was around the fact that they had dinner with Michael Bublé, that they went for a romantic meal together at a posh restaurant, that they went there by private jet, that they were serenaded by Michael Bublé, what this one's wife was wearing. It wasn't about the competitors. It wasn't about the very people that are at the heart of the Invictus Games. And this is why the event has now gained the title of Engrifters Games, because it's just a vehicle for this one's wife. Not only is it seen as a vehicle for her to have a jolly at the expense of the games, as is long suspected that the transport costs, accommodation, food, etc., possibly even her wardrobe, are paid for by the donations that should be going to the veterans. But moreover, that the actual event has been overshadowed, as a typical narcissist would cause to be the case, by this one's wife's attendance. It naturally makes sense to involve Prince Harry because, one, he's prominent as a member of the British royal family, and two, he has served. And therefore, the idea that when you get somebody famous involved, it is to then get press interest because X has involved with this particular charity. But the whole point is for that person to be a conduit for the endeavours of the charitable organisation, to say, I'm involved, and I want you to listen to me tell you about what this organisation does, the people that it helps, what it's actually achieving, and how you can help also. I.e., it's not about me, the famous person. I'm just the gateway to enable all of you in the media to come and pay attention to what's going on, because I'm publicising it. And this is where Prince Harry and this one's wife have failed. Yes, the Ingriftus Games gets mentioned repeatedly, but it's not about what's actually going on. It's not about the fundraising, and it's certainly not about the very people it should be about, so that we know who these competitors are, that we know who the medal winners are, so that they gain prominence, they fade into the background as a consequence of all of the frippery associated with this one's wife. Thus, when you ask, who's the winner? You're unable to tell me in relation to who those actual medal winners are from the Invictus Games, but you can certainly see that the winner would be likely to be viewed as this one's wife because she gets her expenses paid, she gets three days of prominence in the world's media, albeit with attendant criticism, which is challenge fuel. But of course, there's plenty of outlets that report on her favourably from her hair colour change to her fashion to just talking about her being on the slopes. And thus, typical of a narcissist, she absorbs everything about the event to make it about her and overshadows the very people that it should be about with the result that when I pose the question, who's the winner, you can't answer it. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.